We do have a lot of athletes who use it for prep, for prep work, mm -hmm. uh, for, you know, for, for uh, focus. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say that probably, you know, 65 to 70% of the utilization is on the recovery. And that is because it's just has really come to light. Mm -hmm. It's really come to light to people that, you know, there, there isn't really, you know, there, there really isn't, you know, over, you know, over exerting there's under recovery. Sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, to, to, as long as you can recover, there is no limit right. to the exertion that you can put yes. out. Yeah, no, indeed. Like in sport, in the sports performance world, um, yes, the actual performance and the actual exercise is very helpful um, in you know building resiliency. But what is the most important concept is recovery, and I think that's well known in the sports performance literature. Like if you want to get better at something, you better you get you have to get better at recovering. And so uh, I think it's such a valuable component. And so to kind of just to wrap up this section of the podcast, um, it sounds like most people, if they're utilizing the performance frequency sets, that's really to help prime the pump, energize them, get them ready from a cellular level so that they can go out there and perform the best. And then when they're done, now it's time to recover. So it's time to kind of pump the brakes, really heal up so that they can get out there and do it again, you know, in a couple hours if they're a pro athlete sometimes or the next day or whenever they train again. So they'll go in the recovery uh, frequency set. So let's talk a little bit about maybe even use We could utilize kind of a quick case study uh, before we switch gears a little bit. When we talk about what it actually would look like practically for like, let's say an, an athlete, uh, what are typically, um, an at what, when is typically an athlete going to use this, um, prior to an exercise? So do they use it like an hour prior, like just prior to do it and then boom, running shoes are on and they're gone. Um, or do they use it some other time frame? And then when they recover the same way, is it immediately after they are done or can they wait a period of time? Is it beneficial to wait a period of time to allow the you know hormesis to work its way out because I know we don't want to blunt the hormetic effects. So what does that actually look like practically? So on the on the preparation side, it tends to be the feedback that we're getting is about 35, uh, 30 to 45 minutes mm -hmm. prior to um, prior to an event. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's what we're here about 30 to 45 minutes prior to an event for those frequencies to really, you know, take effect um, and and be able to have the impact that the athlete's looking for. For recovery, um, it, it really is, it's very split. There are people who, when I, earlier when I said right after, you know, I mean, literally not coming off the field and throwing it right on, mm -hmm. but there are athletes who, you know, they'll come off the field for a practice or a game and they'll go in, they'll shower. And the first thing they do when they're, you know, done showering up and cleaning is they'll go and do the, the recovery. Yep. Many of those athletes will do the recovery and do it again before sleep. But there are some who just will do it before sleep because yeah. for them, you know, all it's all about my recovery during sleep. They, they view any recovery before that is limited in, in benefit only because there's still more exertion. Sure. Remember a lot of these athletes, you know, they'll, they'll, train that, you know, they have training blocks. Yep. They'll, they'll do you know, cardio, then they'll go and they'll train on the field then they'll come in and they'll do some weights exactly. and they, they kind of get through all of that and then use the evening as that, uh, as that recovery sure. period before. Makes bed. total sense. Thanks for listening to the Hanu health podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. This podcast would not happen without listeners and supporters like you. And the best way to support us and the show is to head on over to iTunes and provide us with a five-star review. This helps us reach others and spread the good word of breathing and stress resiliency. If we read your five-star review on air, please reach out to podcast at hanuhealth.com with your name and mailing address, and we will send you some sweet Hanu gear. Until next time, breathe better and stress less. Oh,